Welcome to The Journey 2020. I'm Charles Morris. Happy to be with you here on this uh, Monday evening. And blessings to you. And for those out there that's on the I-4, uh, I don't know what you call it now, but it's probably a pit stop, uh, understanding that they had um, blocked off eastbound because of a gas leak or something like that. But it's kind of typical. Uh, you know how it is now. If you lived in Orlando for a period of time and you're used to just getting in your car, driving, those days are long gone. Uh, I was just in Atlanta last week, and I, re I remember how everybody always talked about how bad the traffic is in the Atlanta and the D.C. area. Um, uh, Orlando hasn't caught up to Atlanta yet, but we're getting there. So those days of just getting in your car and just driving are gone. So it's kind of like you have to plan ahead of time, especially if you have an appointment and you're trying to make it like catching a plane or something like that. So just want to let you know that um, I understand that they have it under control, you know, but it's always frustrating there on the I-4. I'm Charles Morris, and this is the Journey 2020, where we come to you every Monday, Monday from 7 to 8 p.m. And uh, coming off the weekend, and, you know, a while back, um, I met someone that was, uh, uh, that was coaching my nieces. And... Um, Come to find out, in the after doing a little research, uh, she is cousins to my pastor, you know, and I know she had no idea that my pastor is her cousin, you know. So my pastor started uh, at True Vine Baptist Church, so we came in at the same time. So I've been there at the church as long as he's been there. And I've gotten to know his family, uh, you know, pretty well. And I've uh, actually gone and um, uh, actually talked about her with some of the family members. She had no idea about this, by the way. And the reason why I asked her to come on the show is because I wanted to um, kind of have her talk about the discipline because once we get into why she's on the show, and for those who understand the fitness, those who understand the discipline, those who understand eating right, those who understand the importance of health. Um, I was just speaking with someone today that was part of the Olympic team uh, uh, a while back, and she's writing a book. And the book is talking about the wealth of health because you can have all the wealth in the world, but if you don't have your health, then what good is your wealth? And so I'm going to try to pick her brain a little bit because I, as growing up as an athlete, growing up as an athlete, I understand the discipline of what it takes to do certain things. And so I can respect and uh, I, I, you know, I, I do, yes, because she don't know it, but I got some video clips and that I actually took off a Facebook page. But I'm going to go ahead and introduce the pretty lady and say, how you doing? How you doing? I'm doing good. Thank you. How are you doing? And this is Mary J Jenkins. How you doing? I'm great. Great. Okay. Yeah. And you looking great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Now we're, 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 we're going to back up. We're going to back up before we get into why I asked you to come on the show. Okay. So we got to find out where you're from originally. Uh, originally, I was born and raised in Juneau, Alaska. Alaska? Alaska. Alaska. Alaska, yeah. See, now that I did not know. And how long were you in Alaska? I, I went to high school there, graduated um, high school at Juneau Douglas High School, got one state championship title for basketball. Okay, now, you know we got to, like, uh, talk about that for a minute. Because people look at me strange when I tell them that um, I grew up, uh, well, no, I mean, I didn't grow, grow up, but I, um, I went to school in Maine. Okay, so, yeah. Yeah, so, so people, you know, like, you know, Florida boy from Maine, growing up in Maine, and spent, also went to school in Boston. So they always, oh, well, how do you handle the cold and that, that, and all that stuff. Well, you know. The cold weather didn't bother me. The, 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 the cold wasn't the issue at all. I, I, didn't, I didn't mind the cold. 
it just stay cold for too long. Yes. <laughs> yes. Cause at the end of May, I was still wearing a jacket. Oh, so yeah. you just get tired of it. You know, I didn't it, I didn't have a problem going outside. I didn't have a problem playing in the snow and the cold and you're waking up and it's 25 below zero and that, you know, that kind of stuff. But you're going to have, you're going to, a sister in Maine, so you got to help me. You know, how, what is, the, who, I mean, the family, what, how, how does, well, let me tell you this story. When you're in Maine, right, and you're traveling like, I'm on 95, and you're traveling and then you see a car, let's say you, you're southbound and you see a car headed northbound. Right. And it's a black person headed northbound. And you headed southbound. Do you know we stare at each other until you out of sight <laughs> when you up in Maine? It's kind of like we we're like we look at each other and it's like you and it's like, ooh, somebody black. <laughs> and we just stare at each other until you're out of sight. You know, so what is that like in, in Alaska, Alaska? Well, you know, I, I guess I didn't both my parents. My father is from Florida. Okay. As you know, and my mother is from the Philippines. Okay. So both of my parents are from warm climates, and that's probably why I like warm climates. I do not like to be cold at all. <laughs> um, once I got graduated from high school, I was like, I'm not going back unless they actually make me go back to Alaska. Mm -hmm. And I don't go back very often, but I like to go back. I like to visit my friends, my family. I still have family there, but it was it. It's only what you know. So whatever it is, you know. You don't know anything different. It's when you move away that people tell you it's different. Okay. So like when I went to college, that's when I realized I was living somewhere different. So I didn't even realize that because, you know, I was raised in the Filipino community and my dad was there and I grew up actually in the Filipino community as opposed to the African American community. So it was a completely different upbringing than where I am today. Right. Well, that's, that's what I wanted to ask you about because see, I had no idea you, you know, you were from Alaska because that's a story within itself. Um, it was funny because I, I don't want to get into my main stories because I can share a few stories with you about Maine. Um, what it was like being, there was only three, three, three blacks on campus and, and what it was like. Um, well, you know what, I will share a quick story with you. This was a long time ago. And um, a lot of white people up there were not used to seeing, you know, a person of color. And they had a school on campus. It, it was a school that was, a, you know, elementary school. Okay. And da, da, da. So I'm, I'm walking to class. It's like 8.30, 9 o'clock in the morning. And they have the, the, the line of students just walking across, going to wherever they were going. It was probably about maybe 40 kids. And so as I came up, up closer to them, one, like they, you know, they were looking like, oh, and the little kid turned around and pointed at me and he said, JJ. Oh, wow. That was their relationship to me because they used to seeing good times in JJ. <laughs> wow. And so it was so cute. And he, he was like, JJ. So and I was like, eh, that don't buy No, <laughs> but. That's that's my story in the sense that because they were so far behind times that they were still calling um, black people colored. Oh wow! Right, you know because at the time like they Jane Kennedy just showing you how you know how long ago it was. Jane Kennedy I think was she was the co-host of the Miss America pageant or the uh, Miss USA pageant Ooh. something like that. Jane Kennedy was, and and somebody said how beautiful she she is, and the guy said, I can't believe she's colored. I said, yeah, she's black. And, and, I, and, and he said, I cannot believe she's colored. I said, yeah, she's a black woman. I can't believe she's colored, you know, but. The difference, in, yeah, the time change. Right, and that's how it was. It's like they were, they were separate from the rest of the world. So that's why I'm like Alaska and not knowing anything about it. What was it like? Because that's where you grew up. And then when you left, how was that transition well, I know um, because there's four of us, and I just happen to be the darkest of the four. <laughs> and so I got okay. the most teasing and the most racial slurs thrown at me um, through high school. But mostly from, actually, the funny thing is mostly from the Filipino community. 
And then when I moved away, then I noticed that's when it really came upon me because I went to college in Montana. And then that's whoa, where whoa, 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 I, it whoa, really see, hit whoa, me. See, you keep blowing me away here. You know, there's places that I always tease people about. And that's one of the places. <laughs> because I said places like Montana, Wyoming, North Dakota, South Dakota, they really don't exist. We just hear people talk about it because we really don't meet people from there. They just say that they're part of the United States, but they really don't exist. But that's just my little joke, because rarely do you meet somebody from Montana, Wyoming, South Dakota, North Dakota, let alone somebody black. So, OK, so we go from Alaska to Montana. Well, you know, my, neither of my parents, my dad being uneducated and, you know, graduating with just an eighth grade education, uh -huh. And my mom, for being from another country, they didn't really help me figure out what I needed to do for college. And I, when I started coaching basketball, I made a big deal. It's a big deal to me for my athletes to go to college mm -hmm. and for me to put as much effort into their look for a college as possible because I didn't have that same opportunity. So my mom didn't know, and I relied on the guidance counselor. And the guidance counselor didn't know any more than I knew. There was about eight of us, I think, that went to college um, at Carroll College in Helena, Montana, and we all went together. They were people from my high school. We all just went together. I went, I played basketball there, played four years of basketball, graduated with mm -hmm. a health um, and a personal, uh, physical education and special education degree. Okay. So I actually stayed an extra year, and all my the ladies I went to college with that played basketball, I actually stayed a year later and they were gone and I was the only senior, which wasn't as much fun as it was the years before when they were with me, but it was just a different experience. And that also showed me, you know, oh, you're not the same as everybody else because I just thought I was the same. I didn't think I was different than anybody until I, people started saying, oh, you're different. <laughs> or like one time I was on the plane going from Alaska to Montana and a kid kept rubbing my hand. And I looked at his mom, and she kept trying to get him to stop. And uh, he couldn't stop because I think he was trying, thought maybe the color was going to come off. I'm not really sure. I know, I know. So it's, that was, that was another interesting experience, but definitely. It, now, now, that's, but see, like, I can relate to that story. Because when you go somewhere like Maine, and because people have this per, perception of color. I mean, and I guess we're all guilty of it because of who we are as a society and, our, and, and just how we are and how ignorant we really are as people. Um, I can, yeah, because some of the stuff that, I mean, people would look at you and back then I had my Afro, you know, mm -hmm. you know, I had an Afro and, you know, that kind of stuff. And uh, so being up there at that time and the same, the same, because I ended up, ended up there and um, because it, it, it was similar because I had scholarships coming out of high school but didn't have anybody to help me to do what needs to be done in order for me to apply for these scholarships that I had when when the coaches handed me say hey this college sent this letter this college sent yeah. this letter it just sat there because you Nobody know knew. right right so I you know so that part so I can understand that part and I can also understand that whole thing up there in that culture because for you would be different, but for me, I had no business being up there. How I got up there, I had no business being in the state of Maine. Boston, that's different. Actually, I left Boston and came here. I should have stayed there, but I uh, had a little beef with the coach, and I should have stayed. You know how it is when you had a little beef. When I should have stayed. Now looking back, I right. should have stayed there to play ball the way because that's why I was up there playing ball, and I should have stayed. And he had a, he had a little connection also with playing ball overseas. So I know I should have stayed over there, yeah. you know. And we're going to talk about the playing ball overseas, too. So we're going to talk about that uh, so for people that don't know, because you're going to take us through the life of Miss Jenkins. See, I'm learning something little by little. So take us from Montana, and you ended up leaving Montana, going where? Um, I actually was part of a um, black recruiting, black teachers recruiting. And I got recruited as an African-American teacher to go to the state of Oregon to teach. And so that's where I went. I went, well, I actually had several opportunities. I could have went to California, went to Vegas, 
went to, you know, but I ended up in Portland and I'm, as a big basketball fan as I am, my first thoughts were which team, which NBA team is going to be up and coming. LA was definitely up and coming. There wasn't a team in Vegas. I said, man, Portland looks really good. They're about to be, you know, Clyde, they got Clyde Drexler said, I'm going to Portland. And so when the black recruiting service came through, I went to Portland and they helped me. They paid for my, um, my drive because I drove with my car and the little bit of stuff that I had. And then they paid for my first couple months rent and found me a place to stay. And I started teaching with at $19,000. I think back to that. Ooh, I was tripping $19,000. <laughs> and that, that was, that was how I started teaching. And so I started in, and I met a group of people that they had recruited, not just African-American people, but people, uh, Spanish and I have a really really close friend of mine she was recruited at the same time and we're still tied up until this day and she still teaches in Oregon so wow so take us through the basketball though how did you end up because you played ball overseas right nope I did played actually on a women's semi pro team before they had the WNBA okay and the ABL and that that team was the goal of that team was to you know kind of jump us into, use us as a springboard into the ABL, the WNBA. And I tried out for the WNBA, Sacramento Monarchs, but mm -hmm. I didn't make it. Um, okay. They actually interviewed me, uh, the Sacramento Bee, because the guy actually thought that I made it. <laughs> but I didn't make it. Uh, but I wouldn't change that experience for anything. It was one of the best experiences ever. I mean, I was in the best shape I'd ever been in at the time. Mm -hmm. And I felt pretty good, and I thought I did really well, but... You know, they were looking for college kids who had just graduated from college, and I'd been out a few too many years. <laughs> uh, I got a, quite a few friends who, who have very similar stories uh, with what you're sharing when it comes to um, how it started out. As a matter of fact, if you look, let me see, who is this right there looking so cute with the basketball? <laughs> That's me, yeah. <laughs> that was one of the years when uh, we took pictures that I don't even know if they have that place. It's up in Apopka. Right as you enter a popka off of 441 mm -hmm. and uh, 436, I can't think of the name of it anymore. We took a, Miss Tammy Keaton took a bunch of pictures of me and my kids there, and she did a really nice job. That was a lot of fun. We had a great time that day. Oh, yeah. And uh, now this right here, I want to say this, what year was this right here taken? <laughs> That's actually a few years after that. Yeah? Yeah, a few years later. Um, we just took those, actually, we just took those with our, you know, because now we got cell phones. We took those with the cell phones, and I took a bunch of pictures of all the kids, and that was when, gosh, when that was when they built the new school. That was right when they finished the new school, the new high school at Apopka. So I'm not even sure what year that was. Oh, nine, maybe? Okay. 2009? Okay, okay, okay. Now, the reason why I asked you to come on the show um, because I, you know, I started following you uh, on Facebook, and the last time I saw you, you were coaching, but you were not into the bodybuilding. I don't think you were. Probably not. Not then. Nope. No. Okay. So I'm like, oh. So I was telling you, I have a friend that she's been into bodybuilding for a while now, and we've been friends for about maybe 15 years. And I was telling her about you because I was trying to get her to come on the show as well because she, just like you, you know, you got to hold up your prop. Hold, hold, hold up your prop. I want you to hold up your prop so people can see what I'm talking about. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, now hold it up, yeah. Okay. I'm used to her like that with her little water walking around. Yep. And I'm used to hearing her when she started to train. She, that's all she focused on is her food. Her water intake. Yeah, uh, and, uh, uh, <laughs> yep. yeah right, Got right. Got my plate of food. Right. So take me down the journey of you woke up and bam. How did that, Would you say, you know what, I want to do this. Well, it actually started years before this. Um, okay. Back before I even actually started coaching basketball when I was teaching middle school back in Oregon. I was trying to do it way back then, maybe... Ooh, I'm trying to think now. I was teaching middle school, so that's been over almost, shoot, almost 20 years ago. 
And the only reason I didn't do it is I just couldn't, I wasn't disciplined enough. I wasn't mature enough mentally mm -hmm. um, to do it. I'd been lifting weights since 17. My college coach told me that um, when I drive through the lane, they're going to knock you over. You're so small. Right. And he put me in a weightlifting class. Okay. And after that year, after I realized, I said, wow, I went to college. I weighed 100 pounds. <laughs> the wind would blow, knock me over. <laughs> and um, I gained like 15 pounds my freshman year, which most women do anyway, but I was actually gaining it on purpose by lifting weights and training, mm -hmm. and it just made me a better athlete. Okay. And so once I realized that made me a better athlete, each year I continued to lift weights, and I had just continued to do it. I've never not done it. I just never got serious. Okay. And then um, after 20 years of coaching basketball, it was just time to do something different. And I thought, maybe I can go back to that. I saw a friend do a show, and I said, man, I used to want to do that back when Gladys Portuguese, Corey Everson, Carla Dunlap, you're talking about like the late 80s, early 90s, mm -hmm. where women were beautiful and muscular. Okay. Not unlike some of the women today that are they're muscular, but they kind of look more mannish. Oh, yeah. And that's why I do bikini competitions, because the women still look like women. And it's actually beautiful, it's sexy, it's... You know, it's sleek. Okay. Well, l l let me, I'm going to, I'm going to kind of skip through some stuff here. But uh, we can, we can, we can look at this right here. And you can tell us, it might be self-explanatory, self but hold on, let's see what we got here. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I like to have a lot of fun. Uh -huh. um, it doesn't matter what job that I do or whatever people make me do. I just like to enjoy myself. That's. Volleyball, um, that was just a week ago. Okay. And we were loading boxes, getting ready to house 2,700 girls volleyball, girls and boys volleyball teams mm -hmm. for um, AAU Nationals. And here, this looked like a bridge that is oh, called. Oh, yeah. That was in um, actually Virginia. My nephew was playing um, in an AAU tournament mm -hmm. in Virginia. And the weather was perfect. It was like 80 degrees. And that looked challenging. So I like to be challenged. Okay. And so I thought, well, let me just try that. I paid for it the next day, though. <laughs> I, should, I hadn't ran in since August. All right. Now, no more than a mile, and that was a three-mile run. I don't know what I was thinking that uh, day. Uh, well, the thing is, it's funny because um, I go to Sarasota from time to time. And, and that and bridge over there, yeah, I've and, been and, on and, it. And yeah. I said, that bridge is calling my name. And I went running on that bridge and went further down into close to further down. And I was like, oh, yeah, so, yeah. So. It's just exhilarating to try something different, to do something different. Right. To challenge your body to see right. how much further can your body go and can it take it. But, yeah, that was, and it, that compared to some of these Florida, you know, causeways, that was nothing. I mean, mm -hmm. I've done the New Smyrna um, half marathon, and that's tough. I've done the Miami well, half, well, and that's, wait a minute, wait a minute. See that's that, a little bit different, too. See that, wait a minute. Now, you're kind of getting ahead of, ahead of me here. Let me, let me see what I got right here. Let's, I mean, let's. Let's see if I can call this up now. Oh, oh, that's, oh, no, that's the one we, we got. got number two Let's boxes. I'm sorry. I loaded the wrong one. Let's go here. And let's do, let me come out of that. And let me see here. All right. What's going on here? Uh, that's my friend Rachel. She's actually a figure competitor, and she's, she teaches classes at uh, 24 Hour Fitness, cycling, mm -hmm. spin classes. Mm -hmm. And I just happened to be on the Stairmaster, and she said, I need you to come and motivate me. Okay. I said, what are we doing? She goes, we're going to do plyos. And I got off the Stairmaster, and we did them together. Okay. Good 20 minutes. And we were burnt out by the time we were done with that. That's, those are hard work, 30-second intervals with mm -hmm. a 10-second rest break. So, yeah. So and that was a couple weeks ago. So she's, she's a um, competitor. She's, she's really motivating. I love working out with her. And I'm, I'm looking here, and I think there's also, there might be something where you might be on the beach. I don't know if this is part of this, but that's, I mean, that's some hard work. Yeah, we're about it, to die. Okay. He, oh, he, oh, my. Yeah. Uh, I'm actually working out with my friend Katie King um, at, uh, in Mount Dora at uh, Fitness CF. That was a couple weeks ago. And she's a figure competitor too. And 
I try, like to do legs with those guys because their legs are really big, the figure competitors, mm -hmm. and I'm trying to make my legs bigger. So I've been working out with them, just trying to improve my shape. So, but that was a lot of fun too, but I couldn't walk after all that. It was a wow. pretty tough workout. Well, this, um, the motivating factor, um, because I, wow, and I'm looking at you and I'm, that's hard work there that's hard work that's that's that because work like that plus people don't know like I always say track practice is probably one of the hardest there you are on the beach yeah my, uh, my friend Dimitri and I uh, we taught and coached basketball together at Apopka right that was my assistant coach and we just we were goofing around trying to have some fun and you know how can we get a workout while we're at the <laughs> beach so we walked and then came back and did those Okay. And that's at 24 hour fitness, just trying to increase my, my upper back and trying to get stronger and just trying to get better every day. And people don't know, I'm, we're up at, I mean, there's a 5.30 a.m. crew at 24 hour fitness, group of ladies, we get up every day, okay. and and we they, work out. Yeah, and there you go right there. Yeah, and that was, you. I actually did two workouts the other, that was from the other day, two workouts. So, yeah, that's my friend Katie. She mm -hmm. just had. She was just getting ready to compete in uh, Europa. Okay. So, and those are my teammates, Mary and Lena. They just competed last week. Yep. And then that weekend we were actually expediting, and that's my my teammates from uh, Total U Fitness now, and I'm Nutrition. No, no, I'm gonna I'm gonna pause this for a minute because I want to ask you. Uh, you know what? Let me. Let me go here for a minute. Let me, because I want to ask you this question. Well, you know what? We can go ahead and talk about it while uh, while the pictures are rolling. Women, because ooh, you know, let me check it out, people. Check it out. Um, women can be extremely competitive, but in a different kind of way. Yeah. Probably so. I don't know. What, what what is it like competing with? You know, what is it like, the, the competition? What, what is the mentality like? You know, everybody is actually really, really nice. Okay. Uh, people help each other. I mean, they do. I mean, that's, I've met some really great friends, great people competing. I have some friends from Chicago that I do a lot of stuff with. Mm -hmm. I talk to them every day. Um, I'm part of Black Girls Run, and everybody is motivating. You've got doctors. You've got lawyers. You've got teachers. You've got police officers in this group. You know, it's just motivating, and I've, I've never been a part of any group of people that isn't motivating. I'm also in Black Girls Bike, okay. um, and everybody is motivating. I, I've never been a part of a negative group of people, not, well. not yet. And if they are, <laughs> they're not telling me, and I probably wouldn't notice because I'm not that kind of person. Okay. So for me, I just think life is too short. We've got to have fun, and if I, you're not having fun, then you need to go somewhere else. Yeah, I'm sitting here and I'm um, looking at your pictures, but to get to where you're that lean with your stomach, I want you to talk about what you have to do in the preparation when it's coming up for a show, you know, for competition. How far out do you start training? And kind of walk us through what that is like and what you have to do in order to make that work? Well, for me, there isn't, there isn't a time when I'm not training. I've always lifted. I've always run. I've always done something. So there's always training involved because I just think that as we get older, it, it's harder to get to where we think we want to be because mm -hmm. we always have a vision of what we want to look like, or a lot of us do, even when we don't look our best, we still have a vision in our eyes and our brain what we really want to look like. So trying to achieve that, I think it's a never-ending story. I think you're evolving as you go. But um, if I'm going to do a show, it's usually about 12 weeks out. We start, mm -hmm. you know, cutting things out, <laughs> okay. sugars and things that you're not supposed to, chips, things that you like. They okay. start to slowly dissipate. Like I'm prepping for um, Masters Nationals July 18th. Mm -hmm. And so right now there's no burgers, there's no fries, there's no pizza, there's no 
chips, there's no cookies, and there's no nothing. <laughs> so right now I'm just trying to lean out, do a lot of cardio, 45 minutes, pretty much right now every day of a Stairmaster, and then I lift every day. So I'm lifting different body parts every day, trying to focus on my legs and my glutes, trying to get them stronger, more defined. Right now, I'm mainly eating a lot of fish, which I do not like, especially being from Alaska. <laughs> do not like seafood at all. Really? No. I guess maybe from growing up, I just it was there and it was always there, and I just didn't I didn't like the smell. I didn't like the taste. My mom made seafood every day, and I just she made rice every day. I don't even really I don't really eat rice. All right. You know, because there was rice every day, so I don't really eat rice. I'll eat it once in a while but not really, but these next few weeks, it's pretty much three meals of tuna or tilapia. See, see now, my friend Lena, who I was telling you about, who's trained, now she says, I asked her to come on the show, and she said she couldn't because she was going on vacation. Well, I mean, she was training, I think, to be on a show, uh, in a show uh, a few weeks ago, and she ended up going on vacation, and she said, well, She's going to start back training for a show coming up. And she said, I'm going to do this because I, I just now, because she just had a birthday last month. Okay. And she just turned 50. Ooh, ooh. So she said, I'm going to do this as I turn 50 as a tribute to myself. You know? Awesome. And, and that's one thing about it is that she's always, 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 always training. She's always, I like when I call her, she said, oh, I'm on the Stairmaster, I'm doing this. And I'm call, I talk to her, oh, I'm running, oh, I'm doing this, oh, I'm, you know. And that's, it, it's, 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 it's like I'm talking, um, I'm talking to you. It's really like I'm talking to her, you know. So that's the thing. Um, it's, yeah, I got to plug this in. Okay. All right. Um, uh, where usually are the shows? It depends. There's a show in Florida every weekend. Oh, really? Every weekend. I've, this year alone, um, I've only done one show this year. I did one at Atlantic Coast Championship, and I did it in uh, Fort Lauderdale. Mm -hmm. And then um, I haven't done a show since because I'm just, Masters Nationals is really my ultimate goal because I want to get my pro card. So that's the ultimate goal for me. Mm -hmm. As an athlete, it's just like winning a state championship. It's like mm -hmm. winning the NBA championship. You, there's always that one thing that's the, the big thing that you want to get. And this is one of those things. Um, so, so there's a show every, every, every weekend? Every weekend. Every weekend. Every weekend. Throughout the, are you throughout talking about throughout the states? Or throughout the states, the, the whole right. country, the world. Right. So all you got to do is go online and look and say, okay, I'm going to prep for I don't know, Tampa Pro, let's say, and that's in August. And you count the weeks back, and it'll, you know that at least 12 to 18 weeks, some people take 22 weeks to, to get it together because they're so far away. But um, my coach likes me to stay close to competition weight because it's not great on your body to go up and down in weight mm -hmm. and to mess with your metabolism too much. It really is not that good. So This is a question that I wanted to ask you. Um, do you see drugs on the scene? Like, like I don't see them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> are people doing them? I'm sure they are. But you don't see them. Right. People, they do. People take drugs. You know when they take them because you can talk to them and you can hear it. Or you can look at their face and you can see, especially women, you can see the manly features. Mm -hmm. and, so, and it's hard for women. People think, oh, if I start lifting weights, I'm just going to be massive. It's really hard to be massive unless you're doing, there's some genetics involved, of course, right. mm -hmm. and then you could be cycling some type of drugs. But there's a natural way to do it. It can be done, mm -hmm. but it's, are you, there's different um, leagues that do testing. And right, right. That was, some that do was, that was some my next don't. question, whether or not they test for Some it, do and some don't. Mm -hmm. So it depends on which league you decide to go to. The league that I'm in right now is the, the top league, the NPC. Do they drug test? Eh, probably not. Okay. Now, can I ask what does it cost to enter into the comp competition? It depends on if it's a local show or a national show. If it's a local show, it could be $75 a class. 
That means if you do bikini and you enter class A or you enter open, you enter novice, masters, you're paying $75 each time you enter a different class. Okay. And it could be $100, could be $125. The bigger shows are $200 okay. a class. Like the one that I'm doing is $225 a class. Okay. On the average, about how many people are there as far as in the audience, on the average? It depends on how many people you invite. No, 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 no. I mean, on the average, let's just say on the average show, Ooh. if you look out in the audience, there's about how many people you, not, not in competition, no, but I mean, yeah. as, as in maybe, fans. Maybe 200. Okay. Okay. And then the night, that's in the morning. There might be less in the morning show, mm -hmm. the prejudging. Most people come to the finals and there could be way more mm -hmm. there. Okay. And it depends on what show it is too. If it's a big show, you're going to have more people. If it's a smaller local show, you can have less people. And each competitor invites their family. Mm -hmm. So like if you've got a big family, you could have 30, 40 people there, just one person. Right. So it depends on, you know. Now, what's the furthest you've ever traveled for a show? What's the furthest you've well, ever? This will be my fourth trip to Pittsburgh in July. Pittsburgh. Now, trying to get this pro card. <laughs> so what? So so what does that mean? Now you said pro card. So what does that mean? That makes me a professional athlete. Oh really? And I wanted to be a professional athlete as a basketball player. Right. That was my original goal, but it never happened. Okay. So I'm trying another route. <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully this works. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Now, now, as far as the competition, who? No, I'm sorry. Who are some of the major sponsors that you usually would see there? Shoot, Muscle Leg, Protan. You've got um, suits, different like suits you swimwear. Um, you've got different um, supplement companies that mm -hmm. are there. Different apparel companies that you that go to different shows so you see a lot of those is it is it difficult to find like a major sponsor like let's just say if you wanted i'm just throwing out like nike or you know oh, yeah, it, nike it, won't no 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 no, bodybuilder. no 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 i meant i'm just throwing out a name but i'm just saying is it is it difficult to to find a sponsor and i just oh, yeah. was, was using like nike like me i don't have a sponsor right right I'm, but I'm but but if you wanted to go for a sponsor who would you try to get uh, as a sponsor? It would be somebody like BPI, mm -hmm. which is a um, supplement company, mm -hmm. or somebody like the, the swimsuits, like Suit You Swimwear. Mm -hmm. They do, um, they have suits. Oh. So the swimwear. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> they have swimsuits. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of competitors wear their suits. I wear their suits. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're, you know, their suits feel, feel really good. Um, one of the ladies that um, blinged my suit out center stage posing suits, um, and she does a lot of um, pros and a lot of other athletes. She put, puts them in suits, so. Now, for you, um, and I would say that um, this is something that, that comes from with, within, you know, because being an athlete, like I tell people all the time, you know, it's, people, don't, people here in Orlando don't know me as an athlete, but if you go back home where I grew up and how it was in the neighborhood and the competition and right. you know, people know how competitive we were growing up, it was like all out war. You know, it was like, I'm serious. And that part, you know, that was just, just, the, just the way it was. Um, for you yourself in that inner drive, because that's what I'm saying, I can understand. Because I don't, I don't know, did you see the track meet with the girl from USC? A few weeks ago I watched some of it but I didn't watch all of it but uh, the the four by the four by one four by four that they because of the girl who won USC won by one point but they had to win that race in order for them to win the competition okay and if you had saw that race Every athlete in the world for that moment, for that, she came from out of nowhere to win that. And, and even as they was announcing it, they had already given the race to Purdue. Wow. Okay, they're already saying Purdue had, you know, has won this race. And then all of a sudden, in the last, like, 10 seconds, this, you, one of the, the girls from USC comes up 
and she ran the fastest split time that, you know, it was, I mean, she caught her right at the tape and they won. But to see what it took and how far she came and to understand what it is to run that 400 in the first place, because you know, the 400 is what I call a man's man's race. That's a, that's a serious race. Yeah, that's a dead sprint. Right. But to say what it takes for that moment, and every time I watch it, I'm going, I, it's almost like I got tears in my eyes because you feel in that adrenaline, you feel in that moment of, uh, that, and it's, you can't explain it right. for people who don't understand. You can't put it into words what it is to compete and to get there and to dig deep and to say, I'm going to win this race. And so I say that to say for you every day, that's kind of like what it is for you. It is. It's, it, there's no rest days. There's nothing right now that's blocking me from accomplishing my goal. Okay. I, there, I don't, I have set aside my time to achieve what I'm going to achieve. And it doesn't matter what other things are going on. There's always that block of time that's going to be, this is what my goal is. I'm going to accomplish this goal. And this year I'm, I'm going 100%. I got my foot to the floor and pedal to the metal, and I'm going, you know, hard in the paint, as we say. Well, and, and, and to be honest, the reason why I want you to come on the show is because of what I just said about the discipline and understanding, because I understand the, the discipline and the hard work. People really, you know, they, 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 some people, anyway. First, I want to ask you, where do you, where do you think it come from? The, the discipline in that drive that you have, where do you think that came from? Um, uh, you know, where, where does it come from? I think it starts, uh, you can always look back to when you were a child, mm -hmm. being the smallest, okay. um, number okay. one, being the smallest person <laughs> and people saying, you're too small, you can't do this. You're not big enough, you're not strong enough. And that's part of it, I think, because that's always been said to me since I was a little kid. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not big enough. You're not strong enough. You're too skinny. You're never going to you're not going to be as good as some of the other people. And that always drove me. But even and then when I see people accomplish things and I'm like, well, I could do that. Why mm -hmm. can't I do that? Right. And so, you know, not in a mean way saying, well, I should be able to do that. If they can do it, I should be able to do it. Right. And I use that as a stepping stool to my motivation. So I think that's part of it, too. And then when you see your friends succeed and it's like an incredible feeling, like, man, I want to feel like that, too. The trophy right there. That was a couple years ago. North Americans got second place. Mm -hmm. Yep, I was one place off of getting my pro card. The first year I went to competition. Trophy there. That's an OCB tournament a championship in um, Jacksonville. I actually got third place. Okay, now let me ask you, what was it like for you in your very first show? I mean, you, you that got... one, that picture right there is the second show that I ever did, Chris Challenger's Cup. Okay, and that was that was pretty good because I had just turned fifty. Oh wow! So yep, and then I love my medals, my running medals, my half marathon medals. So those are Space Coast and the Diva Run. Uh -huh. And those some ladies, we run um, a race every year together, the, me and those two. So it's, and it's fun. E even though you're dying, <laughs> at the end you're like, I accomplished this. All right. Well, so. see, see, people don't, a lot of people wouldn't understand that. But, yeah. And, and that was one of the reasons why I wanted you to come on the show, to really to just talk about what it takes. Like, for an example, people, I was, you know, I told you that I do a, a show with Vince Carter Sr. called uh, uh, Youth Central Sports. And I, and I asked uh, Vince, I said, Vince, have you ever had the runner's high? You know, and that runner's high because some people would never know. That's, That's my uh, first competition, my very first competition. Oh, okay. And, I, and now coming up is my favorite picture. Coming up is my favorite picture, and I, and, I, and, I, and I may have to pause it. Let me see if I can pause it. And th there you look so innocent. Look, oh, check out the white dress. <laughs> yeah, you know, people, I've got, I guess I, I like to tell myself I'm Beauty and the Beast. I have, That's you know, I couldn't go picture. to beast mode. That picture was taken by Monica Godfrey. She's actually my uh, Black Girls 
Dubai um, sister okay. in Pittsburgh. She lives in Pittsburgh, and she took those photos. She's actually going to take some more photos when I go um, this time, too. Okay. So, well, yeah, you know, she's, I love she's incredible. She's awesome. She's awesome. Awesome photographer. All right. So I was, I was, I was talking about the, uh, the, the runner's high, and for, and for people out there, the runner's high is real. Okay, when you reach that high, it's like you can run forever. You can run all day. You don't get tired. You wish you can just capture that in a bottle and just and, pull, and just pull it out whenever you want to. Like every day, if you could feel like this, it's the most amazing thing. It's it's just it's it's hard to put into words what it's like to have that runner's high, you know. And I'm pretty sure you have had that. Uh, maybe once because <laughs> I've run like five or six half marathons and I think the only time I really felt that way was um, my very first half marathon because I was I was with one of my friends and I was running with her and I was actually going let's go let's go we were like two miles out we had two miles left and she was like calling me names all <laughs> behind my back saying I'm not running anymore forget you I said, we're almost done. We're about to be finished. Let's go. Let's go. And that was the only time I really felt it. All, right. All the other times is, was about business. Okay. And because I, I, I'm, I like to be challenged. So every half marathon, I try to improve my time. Mm -hmm. And that's what's happened. And so when you're challenging yourself, it's more about business than it is about having fun. So sometimes I got to have a little more fun than try to challenge myself. <laughs> well, but well, it's I'm, hard to do. Let's see. Now, you know, for me, it's always fun. I mean, I did the half marathon in, in, in Annapolis. And it was, a, it was like 20,000 people oh, yeah. there. It was crazy. Yeah. It was crazy. And, and you it, get people who've never run before just right, out there running. Right, right. And it was, it was amazing because part of the run was running around the Indianapolis 500. We ran around the oh, racetrack, yeah. too. Then you run to downtown, whatever it is, and they have it, that here in um, uh, Daytona. They do it in Daytona. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, so that was nice, and um, that was I think that was back in that was early two thousand something, you know. And I still have the shirt and all that. But like I said, when I when I when I saw the girl last week from USC, and it 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 it, it takes you back to when you actually were an athlete, I'm, I'm speaking personally now, back when you were a, what, you know, you, you can consider yourself an athlete, you know, back when you can compete on a high level and what that meant and that whole thing of, there was something about at that time, because people here in Orlando don't know me like that, but when you were at that, that level of competition, there was just something in when you walked in the room and uh, when yeah. you, went out on the basketball court and it didn't matter whether or not you were whether or not you was playing with the magic or anybody else you knew that you could compete right you know you knew that you could be on the court with these guys whether or not it was football baseball or if you were just running track you was fast enough where you could compete where you wouldn't be in embarrass yourself and it was something that you know that that you know you kind of like had that little you know, you, yeah, you know, you can stick your shoulder. I mean, you can stick your chest out. And that was just part of your personality because you can go and compete and do do well. You know, and now, you know, you're older and you sit and you it's still in you. And 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 and, you know, competition when you see it or, you know, somebody who has to drive just like being out on the basketball court two minutes playing with somebody you know whether or not they can play or not. Right. You know, so you it's like, you know, that you know, that kind of thing. If you want to compete, you know, if you just out there just having fun, that's something different. But to be able to have that drive, and I just wanted to ask you, where did you get it from? And that's really because to and even I didn't even know you was as old as you are. You know, one, you know, you know, I was thinking you was in your forties. Yeah. You know, but um to still be at still trying to go higher, you know, that's that's amazing. And I think that's a, a huge um, motivating factor, too, is to see how much further I can push my body without killing myself, <laughs> pretty much. But, you know, I have a little bit of help. I mean, I, I do see the chiropractor um, every once in a while. And then I go to Pro Body Sports, and I go there, and the ladies do. Like I went today, I did some cupping and some grasping, and she stretches me. 
and then she um, releases the muscles. Yeah, because that is funny because I tend to ask you this earlier. I wanted to ask you how much is stretching part of your, oh. you know, Oof. routine because, you know, stretching is so important. It is, and I don't like to stretch, just I am, like most I'm, people. I'm the same, you know, um, stretching is so, so, so important. It is. And so I wanted to ask you how much is stretching is part of your routine. I, I stretch every day. I'm, I'm not the greatest stretcher. <laughs> um, I do yoga, and what helps at school is I, I make my kids do the yoga. And okay. so when they do it, I do it. Okay. And so that helps, that motivates me. And I actually use, we have a, the kids don't know, but they're a motivating tool for me also. Because whatever I make them do, they do, then that means I've got to do it. Because I yeah. think you, you got to, you can you can talk, you know, you got to, you got to talk about it. If I'm going to tell them that I can do it, then I'm going to do it. Okay. You know, it's not just I'm going to talk about it and I'm not going to be able to do it with you. I lift weights with my kids. That's, I think, I hope that I'm an, a motivating person to them because I think it, it's important for them to see that you don't have to be 50 and look like, cr like you're crazy. You know what I mean? You can still look decent and be in shape. Right. And so I think that's motivating. I know a lot of my girls are motivated by that. So, I, you know, I really enjoy doing that. And I just think that's part of, also part of the desire is to be an inspiration to somebody and hope that motivates somebody else to improve themselves. A uh, couple of questions because the hour is almost over. See, you, you see how fast it goes? Yeah, right? it did go fast. <laughs> One, I wanted to ask you, uh, what's next? I mean, you kind of talked about it, but what, what's, what's next? What's next? You know, well, I mean, you know, uh, you, uh, let's just say you get your, your, your pro, what is it called? Pro, pro card. Oh, okay, let's just say you get your pro card. So, okay, what, what would be next for you? Well, definitely to be uh, to make a pro debut, number one, okay, and be on a pro stage with some of the best competitors. I mean, whether I, I do extremely well or not, that would be it'd be like being on stage with LeBron James, being able to be on the court with LeBron James. Okay, you know, oh, I made it to the NBA. Now, am I as good or as great as he is? No, but I'm I'm out here, right? And I'm competing. That's a huge factor. And then I, I definitely want to be able to help people. Um, I'm working on my nutrition certification right now. I definitely want to help people change and, and make fitness and health, being healthy a lifestyle. Because you can't just do it for a month. You know, there's a lot of 30-day challenges out there. But then what do you do after 30 days are over? You can't go back because if you go back, what did you do the 30 days for? So, you know, I just want to incorporate that. I'm, that's what I teach my students. You know, I want them to live healthy. I don't want you to think that you can just do this and, and then after a few weeks it's done because it's never going to be done. It's a lifestyle change. Uh, well, uh, a lot of people don't really know what that means. <laughs> yeah, it's hard. It's hard because we've been, um, we've been kind of suckered a little bit with all the sugar and the fats and it gives us, it gives us the high that we want. <laughs> so we continue to eat that way. Right. And then once you slowly learn that that's, it's not a good thing, you know, every once in a while it's okay, but right. if you're doing it every day, then, you know, there's consequences, just like with everything else. And there's otherwise positive consequences or negative consequences. It depends on which direction you choose. Okay, now I want to ask you this right here. Break it down to me how you related to my pastor. Um, who, his dad and my dad are first cousins. His dad, okay, wait, let me... Okay, his dad and your dad are first cousins. Are first cousins from Georgia? Yes. Georgia. Yes. Okay, cause 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 I know they're from Georgia. Yes, and my my family, my dad, it was he was born in Georgia. Okay. So yeah, he was born in Shelman, Georgia. Okay. Oh. Which is not far from. Oh, there's another place I can't even think of. Eufaula and all them other places where some of my other relatives are from that same area, even though you follow is actually Alabama, All right. but it's right there. All right. <laughs> so, but yeah, so Shelman and Albany and uh, I can't think about the, the other names of the places. They're all, there's like a bunch of little cities that are right next to each other, just outside of Albany. Now, the family members, people from the church call him Pastor Jenkins. Yes. People in the family call him Nick. Do you yes. know him as Nick? Yes, <laughs> but we still call him Pastor Jenkins too. Mostly, I call him Pastor Jenkins too. <laughs> I, you, you know, when I'm teasing, hey Nick, how you doing? But it, I never asked him what the name. Is. But he has the funniest story 
when he talks about his family and how he was the one who told on everybody. <laughs> he said he was the baby of the family and his job was to just tell on everybody. He said he talked and talked and talked. And he said when he was just a child, he was just dealing in his calling. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Talk. <laughs> but he, he said he was a tattletale. He said he told everybody. He told everything. Oh, so, my goodness. <laughs> yeah, so. But he's a really great, great guy. Um, I, I'm really blessed. I'm, I have to say I'm truly blessed. I have. I came here with knowing that I wasn't going to be alone. Right. So. I have a very big family. Even on my mother's side, I have a very big family too. But on the Jenkins family here, it's 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 we're pretty big. It's you a know, big it, family. It, did I ask you how did you end up in Orlando? Well, you know, I was. I'm trying to remember what happened. I came to visit. I came here actually. I brought my basketball team here, um, in to Coco, and I knew that my dad was from Coco. Well, he wasn't originally from Coco, but he lived in Coco. So I made a few phone calls and I found one of my cousins and then she said, well, there's a family reunion. You should come. But it was actually the week before my team was coming and I couldn't come alone without my team. So I just came later and she drove me around, introduced me to a bunch of people. And then the next year she sent me the information for the family, the next two years, the family reunion. And I said, you know, I'm going to go. And then that's when I, that was like in 2000, I think. Mm -hmm. And I met everybody. And then I started in 1998. Well, that was in 97. 98, I started coming every summer and seeing my uncle. Because I knew I only had one uncle left. And I said, you know, I really don't know my family on that side that well. I should probably figure that out. Mm -hmm. And that's when I started coming. And that was in 90, 96, okay. 1996. And then I started coming from 97 on. I started coming every summer. Then I went to my first family reunion in 2000. And I met um, Eddie and um, Eddie Jenkins and my other cousins that live here in Orlando. And they're like, you should, you should come stay here. And I was, because I was coming so much mm -hmm. that they said, you should just, you may as well stay. And then uh, I came for a job interview in, what, 2002. Mm -hmm. And then I had a car accident. And I guess, you know, the Lord was saying, it's just not time, it's too early. And then I got a phone call from my cousin in Apopka. He said, hey, my principal wants to talk to you. And I was like, what? And you should come and stay here. And he took me around, introduced me to some people. And I went, came down and did an interview. And she hired me on, she actually hired me on the phone. Oh, really? He said, she said, anybody who's kin to the Jenkins has got to be good people. And, I said, <laughs> <laughs> and so... I, that's how I, I came in 2003. I left. I did a two-year sabbatical for my job in Oregon. All I came down here with was four boxes. I had sold my house, got sold everything, had a garage sale, and I had my car shipped. Went to Europe for two weeks. When I came back from Europe, I landed in, um, in Florida. I didn't even go back to Oregon. My mm -hmm. car was already here. My boxes were here. I, w I had renters in my house. Mm -hmm. And I said, I'm not going back. Wow. I did go back when there was those hurricanes, the first hurricanes in 03. Okay. I did go home because that was pretty scary. <laughs> I did go home for a few days. I call Oregon home. I actually call Oregon home. I have a lot of really great friends there. And uh -huh. um, I like to I do sneak attacks. I go to Oregon for a weekend, you know, whenever we have a school holiday, and I just come back. And I have my nephews are there. I love my nephews. so. Hey. And they're both basketball players, all three of them actually basketball players. Okay. So. Well, you you're gonna have to come back and and, and definitely gonna have to invite you on um, Youth Central Sports. I know oh, uh, definitely. Vince Vince would love. I know Vince would have a million questions for you. You know he would have a million questions for you. But you're gonna have to come back and give us an update too. Yes. Uh, when it when is your next show? July 18th. Okay, so you're gonna have to give us an update. I know people, you know, I'm gonna be looking for some pictures, you know, because you're gonna be posting some pictures. So I'll be looking for my pictures, you know. But uh, you're definitely gonna have to come back and give us an update, and then you, you're probably gonna come up with something new, adventurous. I don't know. Uh, I, I definitely. <laughs> you know what you would have been great at? What's that? Martial arts. I got two repaired knees and you know, two herniated discs. You, know, you would have been great in martial arts. For, I, could, I could tell from the competitiveness I of am your training. You would have been, 
you would have been My good. assistant principal at my high school t tries to get me to do it every, every, every week. He has his own studio. He's, I've been out there a couple of times, but it's just the, my two repaired knees are just basically telling me, hey, you're tripping. No, no, no. I meant, I meant if you had got into martial arts Way, you, a long time when, ago. When, when, you were, when you were younger, and I'm, and I'm talking about your competitive the spirit is, what, is why I say that, the competitive spirit, you would have been, yeah, you would have been, yeah, yeah. You, especially, well, anyway, <laughs> you would have been good. Yeah, you would have still, you probably still would be. Competing. Mm-hmm, right. I yeah. love basketball so much. I still love basketball. It's my favorite sport. I don't, it's, you know, I don't coach anymore, but I love basketball. It's the one thing that I treasure because it's taken me everywhere. I've traveled to so many places playing basketball. Right. Over, I, I've been overseas mm -hmm. playing, but I, that was in high school, and I've traveled all over the United States playing basketball. I'd never, I wouldn't change any of those experiences. I would have loved to have been able to play, to say that I was a Division One athlete, like most um, basketball players would, but I mean, I played against some of the best um, Division One athletes around. I mean, Tina Thompson, Mm -hmm. So I played against some of them and, and was successful. I just didn't have the same opportunities as they did. They're a little bit younger and they had, they had greater opportunities. Parents who were versed in, you know, getting them what they needed. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, again, like I said, I want to thank you so very much. And it was, kind of, it, was, it was kind of like, a, 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 like uh, just, I just asked her like last week when you come on the show. And I know she's like, what, like, what show are you talking about? You know, what, what are you talking about? And she just said, yes. I'm like, okay, cool, yay, you know. So, I feel special. But um, thank you so very much. Um, continue success. Thank you. Thank with you. With your hard much. work, and like I said, I'm serious about you giving us an update. Definitely. Coming definitely. back and um, praying for the best outcome. Well, we already know what's going to happen. We, we, I'm already claiming it. Claim it in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Again, um, well, uh, let me ask you this right here. Do you have Twitter? Because the people want to follow you on Twitter. Or? I am not on Twitter. I have mm -hmm. a Twitter account. I don't use it. Mm -hmm. um, but I am on Instagram as LeanQueen1. Mm -hmm. And then I'm on Facebook as Miriam Jenkins. Okay. Okay. So if people want to follow you and, and, and keep up to date, they can. Yes, okay. definitely. I appreciate the followers. Yeah. So and that, if I can motivate anybody, that would be awesome. Yeah. So, so do you, do you do training? I mean, do you train other people? I do. I'm, I'm training a couple people right now. I oh. am. Oh, okay. So if somebody wants to use you as a trainer, they, they yeah, they can DM me on Instagram mm -hmm. or uh, instant message me on Facebook and let me know their schedule. Okay. Okay. The men, men and women. Men oh. and women. Okay. Okay. I work with boys all day long. <laughs> now, now, so now let me ask you, um, because one of my friends that I it, it is funny too because uh, I got a call, and I, I I referred them to Vince Carter Sr. because a friend of mine called her her sister had a son who was looking for a trainer, and. Um, I, I referred him to Vince, then Vince referred it back to me, then I referred it to my friend, uh, Fred, who's, who's a trainer. And I don't know if she followed through with Fred, but do you do training as far as if I, if I have uh, a son or a daughter who wants oh, to Oh yeah, do definitely, oh. definitely. Yeah, oh, okay, so people. Anybody that I can help, I would, I would be more than happy to help. Okay, okay, well good, then that's good, good to know. Then you, you definitely gotta get your Twitter account, you know. Yeah. <laughs> You know, so people can follow you on Twitter and Periscope and Facebook, Instagram, and all it's a of lot of stuff to be <laughs> right. keeping up with. All right. Okay. Well, we want to thank Miss Jenkins, uh, uh, Pastor Jenkins' cousin, cousin, right? Your yes. Cousin, right? Right. For those who uh, follow the show, you know, Pastor Jenkins has been on the show many, many, many times. As a matter of fact, he was on a few weeks ago. Okay. And well, he's been on the show maybe about maybe fifteen times over the span of the years since we. Since, Since uh, he started. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So with that being said, we want to wish her a very much uh, success. We already know that with her hard work and dedication, you can't help but love the, you know, the smile. And uh, I'm so uh, in awe of her discipline. And uh, I'm definitely going to keep 
everyone up to date. And uh, with that being said, I want to thank you so very much. And you make sure that you tune in to uh, Youth Central Sports every Wednesday at www.youthcentralsports with Vince Carter Sr. You know, we come your way and we talk about some, any and everything when it comes to sports. But you know, our main thing is, is that we talk about sports and how important it can be used as the village. We talk about how important it can be used as mentoring. And life is sports and so many things. It gives you the highs and the lows. Uh, the, the you know sometimes you win and sometimes you lose and it's how you deal with it you you have to learn how to give and take depend on other people so on and so forth so tune in uh, every Wednesday night at 11 p.m. at www.youthcentralsports.com we want to thank you for joining us here at the Journey 2020 where we come to you every Monday at 7 to 8 p.m. right here at www.thejourney2020.com I'm Charles Morris enjoy the rest of your week. Oh, oh, oh.